Hello, everybody, and welcome to the October 8th, my goodness, time flies, uh, Open Chrome, our planning meeting. Uh, this is part of our biweekly cycle. Uh, this week we talk. We this, this week we talk about GitHub issues uh, in the releases that we have done and we are uh, going to complete for next. And then we talk about some other uh, process and planning related items. We've identified the roadmap, um, which I'm going to present uh, for Scott. Uh, I think we can close on a question about open. OpenStack OVS versus Contrails, and then Judd is planning to do a demo of Chef Metal. So a full agenda, and we're starting a little bit late because of technical issues. Questions or comments before we start? I think I always forget to introduce myself when I do that. I'm Rob Hirschfeld. People who don't know my voice. Uh, all right. Greg, did you want to walk through the the issues in GitHub? <clears throat> um, I mean, we can. We were looking okay. the uh, question of the mostly. I guess we should look at the Broom two items. Um, okay. That makes sense. Since all of the Broom one items are done. Uh, oh, we need to close the Broom sprint. I can look at doing that while you go through that list. Um, so anyway, there's 10 items currently in Broom 2. The main question I had for the community was, are all these still something we want to be doing? Um, they are all, none of them are, quote, fixed, and they're all still out there. So they're viable items. Um, at the current moment, I don't, See any to just get rid of. Um, the one question was around RPM installation of whether or not for the broom release we were just willing to um, say Docker container it is. Um, current con current thinking is that that's fine and we should just document that Docker containers are currently the way to work with Crowbar and we'll replace it later. Um, I know that's not necessarily production deployment worthy, but. Well, Docker containers for the admin node or for anything else? Admin node. Admin node. Okay, so for anything else, it's just a stupid scalability testing hack. Don't do anything yeah. real with it, please. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, now this is RPM installation of Crowbar itself. Oh, yeah, it doesn't work. Right, yeah, it doesn't work. The question is, yeah. will we hold Broom for it, right? Or would we stop, you know, dealing with Broom? And uh, the thought is that it probably won't affect Broom that way. Yeah, I would, I would move it all the way out to Camshaft, or move this, move it, re, make it a feature for Camshaft. Okay. And I'll do that. Um, there was some other, there's two or three items around documentation and format and content. Um, I didn't know if anybody's working on those or moving them forward at the current moment. So like there's the convert documentation from Markdown. Not sure what we're moving to. I know Judd uh, had done some stuff RSV. to, to expose that. that. Um, so uh, anyway, I didn't know if that was making progress or not, or if we were wanting to how that was. Uh, that is almost entirely something that Mike has been pushing forward. Um, okay. And so I, I think we all want to see it happen, but I think that it's it's been uh, a priority for Mike. Uh, Mike responded off on the list today, um, saying that he was going to get back to it this weekend. Oh, well then, cool. Sounds like I need to figure out where the list is. Actually, maybe I am on the list. All right, well. Okay. 
So there, it does bring up an interesting issue that I'll, I'll put in the parking lots to discuss. Actually, I'll add it to the agenda, um, which is um, where, where to put documentation. This came up in a pull request uh, earlier, to the, earlier or yesterday. So, um, other than that, I was just seeing where people were. I mean, that's kind of where we're at. I mean, as we move forward on Broom, um, as a part of the roadmap discussion, we will probably Scott was talking about adding the open crowbar roadmap items into Broom that aren't there. Um, as we go forward, but I was just wanting to make sure we were okay with the content currently. Uh, it makes sense. I mean, we have two weeks to do so I, I think what we're saying is that Broom 2 is starting this sprint, right? This is, we're now starting Broom 2. Might as well. I mean, currently all Broom 1 is content there. Um, and we don't have, I mean, as, we, as it's currently defined. Okay. Oops. Ah, keep hitting the wrong button. I'm, make, I'm making changes on a different screen, sorry. Uh, Ah, you can't see it, but I'm, I've actually got um, I've got Windows covering some of my screen. Uh, so Broom 2 to fix the bad links, Broom 3 for the ISO messaging error. I, I'm actually willing to commit to get this done in Broom 2. That's mm -hmm. right. I can... It's fine. I, I think it, it confuses people when we when we hit hit that. Uh, SSH key injection workaround. Judge, you hit you hit this one, I think, with the Chef Metal stuff. Is this is this a reasonable thing to document? Yeah, it's perfectly reasonable to document um, the. Uh, um, for the use case I'm pursuing right now, there actually isn't uh, uh, a need for it at all. But oh, okay. um, I'll I'll document it nonetheless. And that use case is running Chef Metal on the same box as you're running uh, Open Crowbar, not necessarily from within the Docker admin, um, but from the not necessarily from the Docker admin container, but from the host OS. Um, either way, really, it still copies the keys you need automatically. Good. Which is suddenly screaming for a feature which is check to see if the keys that we have available are present in Crowbar. Um, and present in provisioner, the crowbar provisioner, and if so, then don't worry about it and go forward. All right. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to, I don't entirely understand what you're describing as a feature, but I, we have too much else to do for me to dig in just yet. If you want to throw, throw a feature into the backlog, go ahead. If you can describe what, what the... Uh, yeah, that's what I'll do. Just get this. And then I'm still trying to get this the UI refresh in Ajax. Uh get get Isaac to focus on that. Uh, you and you close some you close some issues. Right, Greg? You've got the um some of the ready state bugs got fixed. Yeah, and as well as I marked Victor's CentOS 7 bug closed. Okay. Or feature oh, awesome. enhancement or whatever. 
All right, so one of the things to, to put into the scrub here is uh, CentOS. So CentOS 7 is functional? Uh, yeah, barring one pull request. Good. OK. And so it looks like there's a manageable amount of work for uh, room two. And then we need to talk, this is actually a design, a design discussion, right? This initial system configuration, we should not allow changing default roles. Yeah, I need to talk with Victor eventually about that one. Is that something we can do here or elsewhere? Either way, I just wondered what what was the meaning of it? <laughs> Which roles were we wanting to not put? Or was an example? I guess I didn't. I just I didn't understand it. <laughs> And of course, I was editing something else. I don't know quite what you. Uh... But, and, and I don't. I don't think we. I think we should keep moving because I. Don't, I don't think we're going to have time. That's fine. Time we can do session. it off. We can do it offline. That's fine. Yeah, I, okay. I would like to to get you guys in sync, but then bring it up as part of the design call. So I'll make a note for what the design call agenda should be. Uh. I mean, I I think we're underplaying some of the things that we've got done, but we'll we'll because Victor, you've made a lot of progress on the physical uh, hardware deployment stuff. It looks like. Mm hmm Okay. You want you want to give a uh, update, short update on where that stands? Um. At this point, I've gone ahead and. I have the core of the BIOS stuff that I need ready to go, and I've uh, added a couple of uh, methods to IPM up to the uh, IPMI spark map that can be used to change the boot ordering using IPMI. So we don't have to write the system specific code to do that because uh, I, the IPMI 2.0 spec includes provisions for doing boot order management. Um, so we should be able to use that as the default unless until we find systems that don't support it. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, like you can uh, just talking to the IPMI control, you can say, I want you to boot I want you to always attempt to pick the boot first from now on. And do the same thing for a disk and booting into BIOS and that sort of thing. Yeah. It's so something that will have control between UP and uh, regular old BIOS. Uh yeah. The IPMI, based on my testing, at least on uh, Dell Gear, the IPMI setting works for both. It doesn't matter what boot mode you're in, the IPMI controller will manipulate, can manipulate the uh, boot order regardless. Nice, okay. So, that may or may not be the case on all the systems we have, but um, it looks like that support will be good enough to use as you know, as, as a default, unless something else overrides it. Cool. Which, fortunately, um, the way we use hammers has support for doing overrides like that already baked in. That's a big deal. Cool. Okay. Um, I know, I know I've been I playing with some of the with some of the raid with some of the raid support. I'd be interested to hear your feedback on it so far. <laughs> You've tried to do anything beyond just the default. Right. So far, I'm just, I, I've just been trying to get past week. Um, 
getting getting the systems to boot by put it, by getting the right assets positioned. Unfortunately, that's oh yeah, blocker for me. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't just automatically download it and install those because there's a mandatory licensing click through on LL size loans. Right. Oh, huh. So my W get isn't going to work. That doesn't make sense. Nope. Correct. Your W get will not work. You have to. That's that's why I don't have a little W get command in here. Oh dear. Okay. That's why I say please download da 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 da. I see. Let me see what it's a yeah. mess of trouble. If, if you actually go to the URL in a web browser, you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. It's an annoying hurdle that's kind of there. Okay. Yeah, my system didn't didn't correctly boot my Docker. Oh, I did Docker slave, no wonder. All right, it's not gonna work anyway. I'm trying to bring up the KVM slave before I boot the um before I boot anything on it. Okay. And I think we have a worker we have a way to at least tell people if things fail what they should do. Um, that's well, that's the yeah the error message uh, I thought was specific enough. Uh, <laughs> assuming people are reading it carefully. All right. Um, yeah, I, I kind of assume that people will actually read the error messages, and I don't have a choice otherwise. I I love your optimistic view of, of people. Victor, appreciate that. Oh, I temper it by uh, I don't give people choices on, uh, you know, if I can't do it automatically, I do. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah. And if I could do this automatically, I would have, but I can't. Flash back to the issues page. Um, issues page. So that's room two. Okay, and we're talking about room two. Uh, if we were to look at room, God, room one's already closed. All right, so good. Any other any other items to talk about in here? It looks like we've got a fair bit of work to do, but a lot of it's just clean up and finishing up the room room pieces. And I, I'm not going to lose sleep if we don't get the documentation restructured or all the Ajax changes made. Yeah, the only other thing I need to do on the bio stuff is I've got all the low-level stuff implemented. I just need to um, swizzle things around and wire in uh, reasonable defaults for the systems that we know about it, I'll, that, which is mostly going to consist of taking the current data bags that we have for our series gear and using it as templates. And your focus on the R series, Dell R series stuff? Uh, considering that it's the only piece of hardware that that I have uh, <laughs> ready access to, yes. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Oh, good. Joe's working ahead on Open Crowbar. Before, I'm going to, Greg, is it all right if we shut down the issues review? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm done. I got what I wanted. Okay. <laughs> uh, can people see the roadmap document? Yes. All right. So this is something that Scott uh, put together. And uh, it's, you know, presenting it for, for discussion. I think that discussion is probably going to take a couple of different, uh, a couple of a couple of iterations uh, as people digest what this is. So the idea here is is to have themes of of what's what we're going through. Uh, simple iter iterative naming for releases. Uh, I picked An anvil, broom, and camshaft, and it looks like uh, Scott is suggesting drill, which makes sense. Um, but the idea being that we're, we want to wrap Broom up in October, 
so that we're, we're enabling physical state for deployments. So that will allow people to start deploying Dell gear predominantly, although uh, Victor, I believe the way you've done the quirks table and things like that um, would be expandable. And Greg, I know you did the, su the super micro mini ITX boards. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, they use the uh, so, that's, that's what I have to hack on. Right. No, it makes makes perfect sense. Um, and I was gonna I was gonna get a, a su literally a suitcase full of those mini ITX boards um, as a demo environment. The the that release is, is supposed to wrap up at the end of the month, and then we'll be focusing on camshaft, which is all about uh, integrations. So pack, um, and we're already starting significantly starting work on camshaft. So salt, chef metal, pack stack, uh, SUSE chef is a reference to the OpenStack SUSE bits, uh, which if somebody's interested in OpenStack with chef. SUSE's got a, a really nice set of cookbooks that could be ported over. Um, any and basically any any integrations to external systems would be the focus for camshaft. So uh, probably the, I would expect that we would pull out a whole and actually there's a whole bunch of this in the in the support documentation. And then drill is the idea of looking at some workloads. So something like Open Contrails, uh, Hadoop, Kubernetes. Um, OpenStack, of course, I think we're already talking to three or four different OpenStack uh, deployment options. So, uh, and I think Ceph probably is another one of the things to consider. But the idea here is that we're once we've got the integrations, then we can actually start doing some workloads because you, you need the integrations to actually deploy the workload. That's the the themes for the different releases, and trying to do a quarterly cycle. So, um, it's more that the we're trying to get to keep the themes marching through. Uh, and then as a community, we're going to need to talk through what the release release timelines and schedules are and what we harden. Uh, but I think we need to be able to close the broom release so that the integrations can have a stable target, uh, just like we did with, with Anvil to get the engine done. I want to check with Scott, and then I'll distribute this to the list, or ask Scott to distribute it to the list. So the, in Broom, uh, we had pulled together a whole bunch of these epics, uh, most of them about setting up Nix, and RAID, and BIOS, and the, cert and the ops support, like NPP. And, uh, and then we included some of the newer ones, like injecting public keys, my own keys, onto the nodes. Uh, and from, from looking at it, I think these... Uh, Use cases are, are in good shape. Uh, and one of the one of the corrections that we that we made during the sprint was we switched from assuming that all of the configuration on the hardware would be done out of band to uh, letting it happen in Sledgehammer or on the OS itself um, and not be as in design be as prescriptive as to whether it was out of band or in band management. Um, or I guess in Sledgehammer I, I was trying to call that sideband. Cool. Uh, and then camshaft is once again about integrations. So we've got uh, Puppet, Chef Salt, Chef Metal, uh, Docker containers is one that we probably need to discuss before we commit a lot of resource into it, uh, so I'm not, I'm not going to drill into it. Uh, and then using an external CMD uh, with Open Crowbar. So this would be uh, actually it's similar. I think this over, over overlaps a little bit, but the idea is most of these uh, we set up our own server, and so in this case you would use an existing CMDB server. Then Open Crowbar API to an asset tracking system, so that proves an external integration, so Crowbar is pushing data into another system, and then um, being able to be the API endpoint for another another product. Uh, well, we already have that in Chef Metal. We're just about done. We do. We do. Um, Good happen. I know, and so I think as we go through, we're going to look through these integrations and figure out what it, which which ones we want to prove. But I think uh, this is the funny thing about Camshaft, right? We've already got 
we're entering camshaft with a lot of the work, the, the, sorry, the, the MVPs or proof of concepts for this work pretty much done. Um, but from a putting on Scott's hat, the MVPs are not the product. They're not. They're not done. Um, and so it's there's a there's a stretch between somebody doing what you've done with Chef Metal Judd and being able to demonstrate it and show how it works and make it and make it go and then turning around and using that as a day to day tool. Uh, I I would love to see us start, you know, doing the things that we need to make Chef Metal a day to day a day in, day out tool that somebody could use to do that type of provisioning. Uh, and that's to me what that the eighty twenty rule on that. But we need to, we have a lot of work to do to make that happen. That sound, that's, that, does, does that distinction make sense? Oh, for sure. And in the notes for today's call, I've already separated out the technical next steps and the community next steps. Okay. So that's one of the things I'd like to do uh, from a blogging perspective is broadcast Chef Metal, but you know, be accurate in stating, you know, hey, it's proof of concept. It's going to take time to get it productized and working and, and really build the infrastructure for it. Um, I still think it's the first, I think we're the first people to demonstrate real metal integration from that perspective but with Chef Metal. Yep. Um, as far as I can tell, we are. And then the, the next one is actually to take, so we've got all these cool integrations now. Let's get some workloads going. Um, and that just because that we're saying open crowbar to deploy OpenStack doesn't mean that it's a community project to deploy OpenStack. It could be that uh if SUSE comes in and wants to do their OpenStack deployment, that would be really, really exciting. They uh do their OpenStack deployment on using Open Crowbar. And so that would satisfy this need even if SUSE's work um it's effectively a sub repo or could even be in Stackforge in the OpenStack repos and not part of the Open Crowbar project per se. That would still meet this type of criteria. Right? Your crowbar's the base providing ready state even if another project per se does the cool. Any concerns or issues? Is this, does does that ordering seem logical? This, this, like a lot of things, to me, you got we, we need the straw man out there to sort of get people thinking and and decide it. And I don't personally, I like this plan. So uh, I think I think we, the expectations will execute towards it unless somebody comes up with other things or priorities shift. I just have one little nit about the deliverables about um, configurable operating systems. Seems like a big ask, and there's so many things to configure um, for Broom. What do you mean, configurable operating systems? If you go to the the second page of the presentation, All right, hold on. I think it's the second page. Or uh, for Broom, the fourth from the bottom, be able to. Modify the installation options to match how it would let the OS to the OS configured. Um, that is that like hacking a Kickstart file? That you know, I'm just confused about what that is. How much we're going to expose through the API or UI? That's an excellent question. Um, it's, you're right; it's too vague. Yeah, I, mean, I would even potentially. I mean, that's the sort of thing that I would assume that in the configuration that the end user is going to want to do to the operating system will happen after it's installed. Right. Yeah, we'll have to ask Scott. It's reason let's ask Scott for clarification. Yeah. I mean, a good catch. when we do the install right now, we pretty much just install the bare minimum that's necessary to. Uh, Get everything up and running. Right. All right. I'm I'm gonna stop. I, I want to talk about Chef Metal um, in the remaining time that we've got. So.
All right, I'm ready to go. Okay. All right, Rock on. Do you, um, need a, do you want me to hook up a share for you? Um, yeah, you got Skype running there? Uh, no, but I can. That's yeah, that'd be great. Got a busy signal from you. Well, hold on a second. I'm not there all the way yet. Try it again. Uh, try it again. All right. Um. Building the gem 
installing a gem and then running Chef Client on the Crobar, that Crobar test recipe that we were just looking at. Um, when it runs, um, this is what it looks like. And you can watch it happening through the annealer. Um, uh, first, it, it looks at the, the pool, and I should actually change that to say, you know, system deployment. Uh, available nodes numbers equals four, and now it equals three over here on the right because now the new node is in the ready deployment. Um, uh, the ready deployment is set to propose. Did you have uh, any questions so far? No, this is really cool. So you're you're just you're driving the API to. Pull nodes out of the system deployment. Okay, but we can still see that they're in that deployment from here. Yeah. Really okay. Um, so these are the actions effectively driving the crowbar via the API. Thanks. Exactly. So um, the node role number 14 has been bound. Um, actually, node 14. <laughs> actually, I probably have that. Uh, um, yeah, node 14. Uh, has been bound to the node role, uh, to the role Crowbar installed node, creating the node role number 185. So if you're the hacking on the API in the background and making sure things are working, then uh, it's node role 185 that you're looking for. Um, so the deployment named ready has then been committed, and um, then Chef Metal emits this, um, which is not really all that usable to the humans. Um, and then it uh, it also emits this, which indicates that it's adding itself to adding this new um, node to the Chef server. In this case, it's just this, it's an evanescent Chef zero server. Uh, not adding any adding any tags um, and adding um, some metal attributes indicating its driver. So when you look at the Chef server. Um, you'll see some some extra little goodness in the uh, um, uh, in the node role in the um, in the chef node database. Um, probably want to add a little bit more to this um, for um, chef metal or chef server to crowbar integration. Um, I'll might write up some design stuff for that, um, and then it's awaiting the ready machine. Um, and that takes a while, as we can see on the right. Um, yeah. The, um, the reason it takes a while is because uh, CentOS 7 and RHEL 7 and Fedora 20. Um, right now, they're all trying to figure out where they are to find the closest mirror, and I haven't found the kickstart option mm -hmm. to say, uh, "Shut up and use the information that I provided to you, and don't try to geolocate yourself." Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's got a stupid timeout in there, and I just haven't found the right kickstart option to throw in the kickstart. Yeah, I've, what they, I've, I've seen that too. What are they actually looking for? Um, if you hit uh, Control B in until you get to Section 5, or until you get to the, the fifth screen in that TMX session, you'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, right here, actually. The bottom line, waiting for an NGO location refresh start to finish. Or you, you went past it. It was the third one, yeah. actually. Waiting for, uh, it's, it's doing geolocation. Wow. Yeah. And That's crazy. I haven't found That's the right option to say, shut up and don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. It just blows right through everything. It's actually pretty fast. That's awesome. So, Chad, how hard would it be for somebody to replicate this? I mean, that sounds like they'd probably need some hand holding for it. They need um, to run Docker admin and have. Um, all the uh, typical um, hurdles to cross for installing Crowbar, having the ISOs in place, 
Um, but really all they need is to install the gem because the gem will create the deployment and start moving um, nodes out of the deployment and running against the API. You really don't need anything other than the gem. Cool. And would they build the gem themselves using the GitHub? That's your um, uh, either way, or they could pull it uh, from. Uh, I can, when we decide to cut a release, I can push it up to to Ruby Gems, and they can just use the gem. Um, but I, 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 I want to. I think I have a Ruby Gems account for this. Yeah, I've. Uh, that's where. Um, uh, I, I've seen it, and I'll probably use it. Um, but I want to run it by uh, John Kaiser first, the original author of uh, of Chef Metal. Um, Get a little, just a blessing, um, so he knows uh, I, it's out there. Yeah, I'm gonna ping Hippie Hacker. See if he's uh, interested. In um, that I wrote. If we switch, um, I don't know. Anybody want to see any code? Um, I got all the code. I guess I closed it. Uh, let's. Uh, we're we're running over time. All right, so that's I'm gonna that's it. Um, we head back to uh, ah oh, the geolo the geolocation just uh, finished. <laughs> so uh, the chef client should eventually be installing. Um, so in the ready deployment, there's the node that's done, um, and like I showed you, the node is reserved, um, and uh, OS is installed. Um, I there's a few things in the to-do list that I put on the um, on our Etherpad for indicating which OS you'd like to install, um, and uh, and a few other options for features that I think are critical um, before I would unleash this into the masses. Oh, it takes the, it used the default OS. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. just doing the default OS. To install is just uh, changing the. Um, there's an attribute on the install OS role that. Uh, Set that up. that as part of the installation. Yep. Um, exactly. And I just have to expose those um, out through um, the recipe, and uh, it'll be done. Um, I will also, if we switch back to the um, the Etherpad, yeah. are my uh, how do I? I guess I can just hang up on you. I have it on screen. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you have your comments in there. So my to dos um, are in there. Um, excellent call quality. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> but my my okay. to dos in the purple. Um, uh, I want to allow. Um, Folks to indicate their own deployment name and not necessarily ready, um, but ready seems to go with the nomenclature in Chef Metal. Mm -hmm. um, uh, allow smarter SSH key management, um, and the third one indicate install OS value and recipe. Um, that would be critical, I think. Um, then I list a few network setup possibilities. Um, either um, indicate which already created crowbar defined networks you'd like to use for your nodes, or even more robustly create networks via crowbar. Um, but I think that's a that's a real stretch. Chef Metal doesn't have any concept of networks like that, so I mean you could add them in the deployment. But you you could you could have the code automatically add all the networks that are in the deployment to the node, which would make sense. But, uh, that that would allow you to sort of get some de decent default behavior. But it, we're designing it. I what I really would like to see is, I, Judd, I think you've gotten this far enough along. You know, let's let's get some community feedback on it, and see if there's interest. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't keep expanding it until we get some external validation. This is a good. M this is a great MVP. Yeah. As a as a minimum, I want to be able to select OS 
That'll, that was a critical minimum. And the SSH keys. Uh, I, you know, but Le even, oh, even less the SSH keys, just select the OS. I, well, I, I still think that's beyond an MVP. I think you've got you've got an MVP locked and loaded. Let's let's call it good. I, I, I right. agree with you about. I, I totally. This is the funny thing about MVPs. 100% agree with your your prioritization on the features. Right. Definitely a needed feature, but it's not needed for MVP. It's not needed for somebody to say, Hey, does this does this stuff actually work? They can they can get the experience with it with it with with what you have, and then they'll tell us if they agree that OS is the next reasonable thing. Um, I would I would rather see us move into another one of the camshaft targets like Packstack or Puppet and, and start working on those integrations and, and help build up integrations that will let people uh, deploy, you know, ultimately get to the drill workloads. So this is, you know, exceeded exceeded what we what we needed to demonstrate. Okay, cool. That perspective. I mean, get let's get you know definitely. I want I want John's opinion on it. I want to get uh, Chris Happy Hacker his opinion on it. Um, you know, get some people who are who are interested, sort of, you know, talk you know get get them involved in the next steps. Get a demo. I think you know I'd love to have take the time to do a longer demo with you one on one, um, and, and and actually screen cap that and share it. I mean, we've got to start with this, but I, I think that you could do a 30-minute yeah. demo; it'd be very productive. So let's, let's look yeah. at doing those. So let, actually, let's add that to the list. I'm probably going to capture a you know a 10-minute or five-minute video of just getting it all set up and deploying it, chopping down the video to nothing, to, to a very short video, and having that out there, and then doing uh, you and I can do a. Uh, uh, a prep demo and then demo to Kaiser and the chef people. Right. Well, let, let me know. I'm happy to to let you run it through a join me session and and Camtasia, so that we can then um, you know I can then do post post editing and things like that. Easy, easy, easy. To do that. Okay. So, uh, if you don't have something like Camtasia, you have to do it in one take, and it's hard to speed it up and clean it up and zoom. I like it. All right. All right. We're we're way over on the call, so I'm gonna I'm gonna close it out. We will save. I'll, I'll just email the open contrail stuff to the list, and we'll get some feedback from that. Cool. Everybody, thank you for joining. Sorry about the technical difficulties in the beginning. Um, I I I feel like progress is in, is accelerating, and so. Uh, I'm going to start uh, opening the floodgates from a blogging perspective about talking about these things, so just so everybody's aware. Uh, that, sh that, that should create some more interest, um, especially going into the OpenStack Summit. So. Everyone, thanks. Have a great day. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, guys. Bye.